Welcome to the DJE Podcast, where you will learn about real estate investing from real life examples. Here's your host, Devin Elder. Okay, guys, on today's episode, I'm very happy to have with us Josiah Mann. He's an entrepreneur and software developer and the founder of a platform called InvestorDealRoom.com. It's an investor management platform that helps real estate syndicators scale their business by automating a lot of the processes involved and improving investor relations. So without further ado, Josiah, how are you? Welcome. I'm doing great. Pleasure to be on here. Thank you very much for having me, Devin. Yeah, yeah. Thanks for, for making some time. So I'd like to start off with, um, first of all, where are, you, where are you based out of? We're in Springfield, Missouri, um, kind of the center of the Midwest. This is where I'm from originally. Uh, I've kind of lived, lived around a bit, went to Kansas City for a while, then lived in uh, Dallas or north of Dallas for about a year and then just moved back here in January. Okay, great. Very good. Well, you're, today you are the, the founder of this platform. You've got this software automation tool that, that syndicators and sponsors are, are using. Um, take us back a little bit and how did, you, how did you end up in this space? What was the journey getting to, to where you are now? Yeah, actually, like most most of the, the sponsors I work with now, I, I read Rich Dad Poor Dad. I mean, that's where, where everybody starts, right? You're like, I, I have to be involved in, in real estate investing on the investor side of that quadrant. Um, and then that kind of led me to the multifamily space and read a lot of the multifamily books. And, and uh, one I really loved was uh, uh, Emerging Real Estate Markets by Dave Lindahl. And so I was really kind of paying attention to market cycles. Um, Long story short, I ended up getting involved in Dave's coaching program and, and being a student there. And I was uh, trying to syndicate my own deal for about a year. And, and I really invested, you know, I, th I think a lot of people do this, especially where we're at the stage in the market cycle we're at, where it's really hard to find a deal when you're just coming in, uh, you know, as a beginner. I tried to find a deal for about a year. I moved to Kansas City to talk to the brokers, to build my investor database, the whole thing. And then, uh, and, and kind of the whole time I was in the space, saw opportunities to create software. And I'm really, I'm kind of a systems guy and I like to stick to something until I complete it. And so I was like, not going to do that. I'm going to like get my first deal. I'm going to get my first deal. I'm going to put out offers, you know, doing that whole thing. Um, and then I had a lot of questions about, you know, my inexperience in doing a big deal initially. I wanted to do the, what you're doing, right? The 150 plus, like, let's buy a business. Let's leverage the scale and the you know economies of scale and all of that stuff um, and then I finally met a guy you know was looking for a mentor the whole time and in my experience the coaching programs I, I like to think would like to think they provide you a mentor but they provide coaching it's a very different thing uh, so when I finally met somebody who had done you know who had 3,000 plus units and and had you know he had 45 employees at the time and I had a, a long series of conversations with him. He had been around since before the, the last recession. Um, and he told me like, look, real estate's still going to be here 10 years from now, 20 years from now, like take some time, think about, you know, think about where you want to be in the space. And, and the question he asked me that was super valuable was what value are you providing to the, to these equations, to this industry? Um, and the truth was I didn't have a great answer internally. I gave him an answer. It's like, I'm going to syndicate a deal. But someone like you, Devin, you have all of this single family flipping experience and all of this, you know, you, you've done a lot of hands on work and I was just super ambitious. So I didn't, I didn't have that background to rely on. So uh, that question really stuck with me. And, and the answer of about a year of thought and, and time later was investor deal room uh, or creating software specifically for multifamily syndicators. So I could be close to them and learn from them and kind of extend my own mentorship. That's such a really long answer to the question. <laughs> no, that's great. I th there's a lot to dig into there. And I was taking some notes. Um, coach versus mentor. That is, a, that is an important distinction. And um, there's a lot of programs out there, which I actually do advocate. I mean, I, I believe in paying for shortcuts. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, but you have to be cognizant of, of kind of what you're what you're getting there. And, and um, I, I love the, the add value piece. I mean, that's absolutely correct. You've got to be able to come in and, and provide some kind of some kind of value, I think. And I, and I preach the same thing. Hey, go big, go 100 plus units, economy, right. skill, all the things that we've all probably heard. And, and I do believe in that. But, um, you know, for my my process for myself, that was a long 
hard road to, to yep. get there. That's it, it, you know, and now it's easy for me to say, Hey, just start there. But yeah, you're, you're, you're right. So, um, I love that you're able to find another way to, to add a ton of value and the company's grown, right? I mean, this is a relatively new company, but, um, you guys are solving such a pain point for multifamily or commercial syndicators. Um, that I, I think it makes makes perfect sense to be in the space you're in. So basically, maybe maybe for folks that are new mm -hmm. to um, what you guys do, maybe kind of give them an overview so we don't just talk past what the sure. platform is. Yeah. So so there's a, there's once once somebody actually syndicates a deal and they have let's say 50 plus investors. So we're talking to big deals, big syndicators. When they when they have 50 plus investors just managing the capital raise component of that is a big task in itself. So it's, uh, you're going to be using DocuSign to get documents signed. You're going to use Dropbox to share documents later. You're going to use email uh, and then your newsletter to just keep your, your leads warm. So there's this whole, there's a bunch of different tools in a bunch of different places. Uh, and then you've also got your spreadsheet where you're managing who's committed this amount versus who's actually signed the documents versus who's actually paid. Uh, and so that just becomes a huge, uh, I mean, a huge set of tools and, and technologies to manage all of that. So um, what I found was I, I actually went and interviewed. Um, I mean, I, I messaged and interviewed about 100 different syndicators before I started building anything and wow. just asked them, like, what sucks in your business? Uh, and, and this was the answer, hands down, for anybody who was doing big deals. It was like, look, we know we need an investor portal or we need a way to, to centralize all of this stuff instead of having it in all these different places. So that's, that's how I kind of got the idea to build investor deal room. Uh, and then obviously, you know, once, once somebody's in a deal, that's just the capital raise part. Once they're in the deal, you've got to send out project updates. You've got K ones or like uh, annual tax documents that have to be shared with that investor. So, uh, you know, people looking to get into syndication don't realize, you know, it's, it's a business, right? But after you actually close the deal, that's when your relationship kind of lengthens with the investor. And now you have that long-term customer service relationship. So we're really trying to help improve that part of the, of the relationship as well. Yep. That's right. I mean, no one of those things on its own is, is complicated. Uh, you know, delivering a K one to someone, not that difficult. The CPA prepares it, you know, you've got it and you, you deliver it to them, but you talk about 85 investors on a $10 million, $20 million project. Um, and that it's, it's, uh, what I would call death by a thousand paper cuts, right? It's nothing mm. overwhelmingly complex. It's just the minutia and the number of different folks you're dealing with. Um, you know, the first yeah, and you don't want to be focused on, on the little minutia when you're trying to right. focus, as I know my own business now, right? You're, you're trying to right. grow your business and scale it. So you have to be thinking big picture stuff and, and what are the types of things you want to do? What's the vision, getting the deal, closing the deal, uh, and then, and then even just the investor management part where, you know, somebody, if you're mailing out those K1s, somebody changes their address. Well, like, right. do you have a central place where you have the most updated address all the time? Do you have, you know, that stuff can just end up taking days and days and hours or weeks out of your, you know, time you could be spent doing other things. 100%. Because those things must be done, right? You've got to deliver K1s. You've got to deliver monthly and quarterly reports, all these things. But they essentially add zero value. Um, but they've mm -hmm. got to be done. So great candidate for, for automation. One of the things we kind of do internally within my firm is it, 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 every time there's a task or an outcome, we kind of run it through three, three filters, right? The first filter for a task is, can we eliminate it? Is this an is this a task that we can somehow just eliminate altogether? Mm -hmm. Can. And then the second filter is always, can we automate it? Right. And so mm -hmm. a, lot of times, a lot of things can be handled with software automation. And then the third filter would be, uh, who can we delegate it to, right? So it's not right. personally handling it. And so the there's, a, there's a whittled down set of tasks. And, and ideally for any organization, the, the principal of a founder is working on a very small set of very high value tasks, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So IDR has got that kind of second component, that automation filter mm -hmm. uh, to handle a, a lot of this stuff. And, you know, mm -hmm. it, this could, this could mean the difference between like hiring in an employee and taking on payroll versus, Hey, let's just automate a lot of these tasks. And like yeah. for example, talk about one of the things I love is the K like K ones, right? K ones mm -hmm. come in. What's the process look like in IDR? Cause that's a huge. Point. Yeah. Yeah. So, and we talked to a bunch of, or like CPAs about this or syndication CPAs a lot about this, about for them, even it's a big pain. And, and if, if somebody doesn't have a technology solution or, or a way to upload these with technology, they're literally having to go find addresses, contact people to get their updated address. They've moved, they've whatever. And they have, 
the investor has to have this to get their taxes done. So there's a, a tremendous amount of time pressure on as soon as you get these things, you've got to get them to your investors. Uh, so with, with investor deal room, basically we have a bulk upload tool, like on each project that you have K ones for you go drop in 20, 30, 40 documents, and then just select with from a drop down, which investor it goes to in that deal. Uh, and then they're uploaded to them. They get a notification and they can view them all in the portal. So, Again, it's it's the centralization play, and then for the for the operator, um, we had, you know, that that specific feature, the bulk upload feature, we get a lot of thank yous at the beginning of the year, of, or when, when tax time comes around, we get a lot of thank yous. Like, oh my gosh, this was so much easier <laughs> than even just Dropbox because Dropbox, you're you're going to go create a new folder, add a person's email to it, add one file, a new folder, add another person to it, add another file, and with Investor Deal Room, you've got them all. You've got your investor roster already outlined there in the project. So you just dump all the files in one place and then just check from a drop down which one it goes to. So it's, you know, let's say it's goes from, if you have a bunch of deals, you could easily go from four plus eight hours a day, eight hours to get your, your K ones out to, you know, 30 minutes to do everything. Yep. Yep. That's no joke. And that's that kind of software automation that can uh, be a real life saver, especially with something time sensitive, like a hundred investors waiting to do their tax returns, waiting on mm -hmm. you, right? You don't want to right. be a bottleneck um, for that. That's obviously going to cause a lot of upset and that's not good customer service. So yep, um, love it. That's a, that's a great feature right there. I'd like to, to talk a little bit about your perspective on how syndicators are operating their businesses and, and raising capital, because you've got kind of a unique perspective now in, in having, you know, you're, you're a team member for a lot of big syndicators now mm -hmm. uh, in kind of the back office IT uh, space, which was, which was your intention, right? How do you add value? And now you're, now you're here, you're supporting a lot of different operators. Are there some best practices you can share without, you know, giving away uh, names and, and secrets? Sure. Of course. So, so I'll tell you some of the challenges because the challenges are real apparent in the industry right now, which is that the, the capital raiser game or the what's been happening that, and this is, this has been on a bunch of different SEC attorneys where they're sharing, you know, how to raise capital legally and how to, how to not be defined as a broker dealer. So right. there's this big debate in the space where, you know, I guess the short version of it is what's happened is uh, so people who want to have these run these big business and do bigger and bigger syndications want to work with somebody who has access to investors and can bring investors to the deal. And then you run into the, the legal requirements of what, what actually, how are we able to do that legally? Um, so there's, there's been a bunch of back and forth about this. And, and one of the, and we're actually, I'm actually doing a, a series of interviews with SEC attorneys, some of the big SEC attorneys in the next, in the coming weeks to share with my audience, because uh, everybody has this question and there's a lot of different, uh, thoughts about it. Um, but one of the, there's, there's a lot of concern about doing that safely. And some of the ways that we know to do that safely, I'll, I'll share that we've learned. So one of them is just the fund of funds approach. So mm -hmm. if a person's going to be raising capital for a sponsor on the deal, uh, they can create their own fund and bring that to either one operator or multiple operators. Um, and, and that's totally legal because you're not soliciting uh, somebody else's deal. You're soliciting your own uh, private offering. Uh, so that's one way to make it legal. Now, smaller capital raisers or smaller people or uh, companies have a little bit of challenge. It's a challenge to do that because you got to pay the fees. You got to pay the uh, PPM fee and getting all the legal stuff set up. So it's going to cost 20, 30 grand or whatever to get that going. Right. Um, but that's, that's a surefire way to not get in trouble. And as these, as these guys get bigger and more successful, it's, it's a, a really, really wise approach to take. Um, and then the other thing that uh, from my understanding, and now this isn't legal advice, obviously I'm not an SEC attorney, but we've had a lot of conversations. And the, the, the main thing is having somebody be a legit co-sponsor of the deal. And so uh, their responsibilities can't just be raising capital and they can't be compensated based on just raising capital. They need to be actually part of the deal, uh, helping with other parts of it through the life cycle of the deal. And, 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 and then if they're bringing capital, like everybody's doing that, that's fine. Everybody should be bringing capital to make the deal close. Um, so there's, there's a lot of questions and a lot of um, research being done about that because it's a growing space in the industry. And anytime you have new growth like that, um, you know, it's going to hit up against regulations a little bit and everybody figuring out as entrepreneurs, like, well, how do we comply with um, these regulations that were really put in place for bigger companies? And it's kind of filtering down now. 
That's a great point. Yeah, there's been a lot of discussion about that, how to raise capital legally. Um, you know, the, the takeaway I get is there's issues out there. Uh, as long as deals are, are going smoothly, you, you're never going to hear about them, right? But right, when right. bump in the road, um, that's going to that's gonna expose some of this stuff or when the, when the tide goes out or who knows what's next with kind of our macroeconomic picture here. Um, <laughs> that's going to you know, that's going to cause some, some challenges. And so that's one of the things we're, we're paying a lot of attention to is how do we make sure we're compliant? We spend a lot of time talking with our council on uh, setting that up correctly. And so I think there's a, a lot of value for you guys to add there, of course, not as attorneys, but by mm-hmm. interviewing different attorneys and, and setting up your product to be able to, to stay in compliance with their huge value add. Yeah. And one of the things I mean, we, we've talked about, uh, just, just like a task management system within the tool to, to, to be able to track that uh, a co-sponsor is, is doing like doing financial reviews every month and doing this every month or we're taking part in the deal other than just the raising capital component. So uh, there's, you know, we're trying to figure out ways to, to work with our, uh, you know, to learn and educate and then also to provide more value through the tool to help uh, kind of pay attention to that stuff. Yeah, that's perfect. That's perfect. Um, what about, uh, can we get into a little bit of stuff on, on product roadmap? I mean, you guys have had some nice releases. So in full, you know, disclosure, I'm a, I'm a client and I've used you guys for a, a while now. We've done a number of our syndications on the platform. And frankly, we would not be, we would not be doing the deals we're doing without that framework because I've done the, uh, call the bank, pull up the Excel sheet, uh, wait on hold with the bank, have them verify the wire and, and do an Excel sheet. It's just, you know, it's probably one of the most painful admin things that, that you can do. And so mm-hmm. kind of done away with that and, and having the software platform lets us do more deals. Um, so you guys have had some great product updates. Is there anything you want to talk about kind of future, future state, or is that, is that holding you to something that you don't want to be held to or? Where? Yeah, well, no, no. So we're, um, you know, what we're doing right now is we're, we're kind of, expanding our growth in a, in a limited way. So, I mean, there's a lot of demand as, as there's growth in the space, we have a lot of demand for, for the product. Um, and we're trying to find ways to provide more, more and deeper services to our clients instead of just like uh, working with absolutely every, with absolutely everybody. Um, right. And, and so, I mean, this is just kind of business stuff that everybody goes to where you kind of filter who is, who is our ideal client and who is our product ideal for, because we want to have these relationships where we like the people we're working with, um, there, you know, we, we wrote down our, our kind of company roadmap or some, some of the ideals of our clients and our clients love their investors. They love their properties and their projects and they love their tenants. Like that's important to us. So, so when we're doing our, cause, because we do the same thing, right? So, um, we're spending a lot of time focusing on how to create marketing materials right now that, that, that differentiate us and, and what we're really about and what are our values, right. And, and, and drawing those people to us. And then figuring out with with our clients how to go deeper and how to provide more value in terms of uh, some of the marketing education and stuff that we know on that side. And and then the stuff that we're learning across, uh, you know, all the clients we work with, we do learn kind of best practices and how to make the PPM easier to sign for your investors and things like that. So uh, this product specific features, there's some, some real common ones that we know will develop in Q1 of next year. Um, we'll get deeper into the distribution calculator stuff. Um, but a lot of it is around... Um, the actual marketing side of things. And so the CRM and marketing and, and automation type things, because all of that, your prospects, your investor prospects tie right into uh, becoming investors later. And so the, the, the big pain that I see that's occurring that I think we're going to dig deeper into is centralizing data where you have a CRM newsletter, you have uh, spreadsheets, like we're, we're trying to, to, to centralize as much of that as possible to provide um, and a, a tool that's really built for small syndicators to help them to scale, but where everything's in one place and you can view it all there. So I think that's the, the direction we're heading in a broad, in a broad sense. Yeah, that's great. I appreciate the insight and that, that's a huge value there. The, the fewer tools, the better. I think, you know, as a business owner, it's always tempting and the path of least resistance to add another tool, right? Hey, this mm-hmm. tool's got this feature. Let's get this subscription. And, you know, we're, you know, my company's on maybe half a dozen software platforms. I wish it could be one, um, mm-hmm. but, you know, we, we I vehemently resist new <laughs> new software platforms because it's just the easiest thing to do. Say, hey, bolt on another platform and then you're dealing yeah. with 
another set of training, another platform, et cetera. So to the extent that any business owner can consolidate software platforms, I think that's a win. Mm -hmm. And we're finding, we're, we're learning the same things ourselves. I mean, I'm, I'm growing along with my, my customers. And, and as we like the pain of managing that, managing, you know, contact information in multiple places, just the fact, like if you're doing any marketing and have an email marketing platform, like you have MailChimp or whatever, and then you've also got a CRM and those are not connected. That's a huge pain to just keep those two things in sync. And if you add on it an, and an investor portal, um, there needs to be really, really good communication between those or you need to have it all happening in one place. So we released the project updates feature this last quarter um, to, so you don't have to segment out a new segment in your newsletter every time your investors close a deal. You can just send out an update to those investors. And so I think things like that are things that will, um, tools that we're looking to help our operators get, get rid of a couple of those tools and, and hopefully do a better job with our NER. Yeah, yeah, that's perfect. Love it. Love it. What are you seeing right now from your operators on uh, kind of the macroeconomic picture, right? We've, um, we are long in a cycle. This is kind of late 2019 when we're having this conversation. Uh, you know, there's some, there's some talk about yield curve inversion stuff, the, the, you know, economy, et cetera. Um, is there any sentiment kind of among your operators on, on what's over the horizon or is everybody saying, Hey, we're just trying to do deals that pencil as we can. Yeah, I, I think every, all, all, all of the clients I'm working with are pretty pretty well aware that we're, we're headed toward a, a down cycle um, and, and are, you know, I'm pretty sure that everybody we're working with is, is penciling that in and try, trying to account for that the best they can. Um, so, yeah, all the conversations we've had, and they're doing fewer and fewer, you know, fewer deals than they would be doing. Um, or then that hopefully then they will be doing at the, at the bottom of the cycle. So mm -hmm. um, I think everybody's accounting for that. You know, it's, the, the thing is it's uh, until it all kind of washes up, you don't know, you don't know what you don't know. So we don't know exactly what's right. going to happen in the downturn. So you're just trying to, to account for your underwriting and, and do the best you can. Um, so there's, there's still definitely deals happening. There's deals happening in, you know, self storage, multifamily, uh, a little bit of office retail stuff happening. Uh, but the multifamily deals are obviously very, very hard to come by, especially in primary markets. They're very, very difficult to get a good deal. Um, we're seeing, I mean, some of it's, some of it's just local. So there's different areas where, where things are picking up in Tampa or in areas, Phoenix, Arizona and different places like that, where things, the market's kind of at a different place than it is necessarily in Dallas or uh, some of the other bigger markets. So, so I don't know, there's, that's probably a, I don't know how, how, clear that is of a thing. I think all of our operators are aware of the market cycle uh, to some degree or another and, and are kind of trying to plan accordingly and make sure they're, you know, protecting their investors and getting good returns through that. Yep. Yeah. That's a great point. I mean, there's, um, I think the way we approach it is, you know, we're going to underwrite with some, some conservative mechanisms that we put in place on any project. That means we say no to most deals. Uh, but if a deal pencils, we want to buy it. And we feel, you know, for our firm, we feel pretty strongly about multifamily for, you know, the foreseeable future. And, and, um, you know, there's people that have been sitting in cash and started doing that in, in 2014. Right. And yep, so, yep. um, it's a balancing act like anything, but you know, fundamentally we like multifamily because, uh, it's such a, it's such a primary need. What are some of the other verticals you touched on or, or I guess, I guess, product types that your operators are in. I mean, you, you mentioned self-storage, mobile mm -hmm. home parks. Is there, is there a whole lot more than that or is it just kind of a handful of different? Yeah. Yeah. So self-storage and mobile home are the three that are, that are pretty often tied with the multifamily or this, the, this, the same guys that do those types of things. The other is, uh, so there's a lot, there's some commercial real estate development, um, especially in the coast where, where they're doing ground up development. Um, and then there's a little bit of, of the retail and office and, and that type of thing as well. Um, and then the, the, I mean, the last is, you know, those are, there's a lot of those that are just single asset uh, operators are going and buying single assets. Uh, more and more of our, of our operators are going out or, or creating funds. And, and uh, you know, I think, I, I think you have a couple of funds open right now too, right? Or, or are you? We're doing single, single entity, you know, so okay. we'll, we'll open up a project, we'll fund it, you know, until we'll keep it, you know, I tell investors it's, they say, is it open? And well, it's open till it's closed. I don't want to make yeah, it. Yeah. We just open it, fill it up and then close it. Um, we've looked at, at kind of a fund structure. I, it's, every time I've looked at it, spent time on it, it's been cost prohibitive um, mm -hmm. and, and kind of had some other 
uh, gotchas that we don't want to contend with. But, sure. um, I, you know, the platform's capable of handling it, right? What is the yeah. next you guys are seeing of, you know, kind of single asset capital raise versus, versus fund? Is there, is there kind of a breakdown that you're seeing with yeah. the operators? I mean, and, and that some of it just has to do with like, we're maturing along with our, with our operators. So, so, you know, initially we're, we're uh, working with, with, one level of client and then they're growing and we're growing with them. So there's, there's more and more of our clients that are doing uh, fund fund type things. So not many of them are doing open funds, like long-term single open funds. Uh, there's a couple that are doing that, but more often uh, we're seeing multi-asset funds where they're doing uh, uh, one of our clients is doing a fund for four different apartments that they're getting ready to buy. Um, and so you're kind of, you know, uh, I don't know what the, what the word, but mitigating your risk across four different assets. And then also your, your, your legal stuff is going to be spread across that. And so you have one, one set of paperwork instead of four. That's uh, so nice. Yeah. yeah. If you end up, in, if you end up in that type of possibility or, um, you know, there's, there's, there's some ways to leverage that and, and to actually save money. And then also to, you know, from what I understand, I don't have any investors, but, but to, help de-risk them and across multiple assets as well. So, so there's some, there's some cool stuff there and you know, that we're, we're learning about as we go to. Um, and one of our, one of our, my business partner actually has a kind of a fund administration that he does as well. And, and so we've, we've been fortunate to, to learn a lot about that and to see uh, a, a lot of guys who started just with the single asset stuff are moving up into funds and, and it gives them a little bit more leverage. So that's pretty cool. Yeah, the idea of taking a, you know, we, we might have a project with twenty five, thirty thousand dollars of legal expense just on our side, right? Forget about the lender. Mm -hmm. We've got another, you know, thirty K of legal expense with the lender. Yep. Um, but if you could take a thirty thousand dollar legal expense on say a PPM and related docs and spread it across uh, you know, a thousand units uh, mm -hmm. across mm -hmm. assets instead of across two hundred units, there's some nice uh, nice economies there. Mm hmm Absolutely. Yeah, and if you can and you know, you don't even necessarily have to have all of those under contract right away either. You know, if you have one, you know, have it ready when you have one. And then if you can deploy the funds a little bit later. Um, so there's some education and investor education around that. And because inv investors that are used to doing single assets, it looks a little different in terms of when the funds are going to be used. But um, but it, it, it can it, it can be a win win all around. There's just a little education in it. Yeah, that's, that's great. So for the, for the future, you're, you're plugged in now with a lot of different operators doing a lot of big deals, which is a, which is a great spot for you guys to be in. Uh, and it, you know, based on our, our kind of interactions. Hey, I, I lost your sound there for a second, Devin. I can't hear you. Let's see. How about now? So you've, you've been growing your team um, in, in order to kind of grow the business. Is that what's kind of on the roadmap for the next couple of years for you guys is to continue to grow the, the software platform or do you see getting into some deals uh, as operators yourself at some point? Yeah, so a little bit of both. So we definitely, uh, I, I think we'll always be technology first in terms of our, what we're really good at, technology and marketing both. So that's, that's what, I mean, all of our team's background has been in that. So I think that's a good a good place for us to be, um, but we actually I've I've been talking to actually the owner of the building we're in now, and they brought us a deal like a nine unit apartment that's real close to us, like a little deal, and they're like, look, this is the best deal in your in the town, and we want to give it to you in terms of letting us, and they were going to buy it themselves, so uh, I I mean we'll definitely get involved at at some level ourselves, uh, but we're we're taking it slow and learning what what it is for us, you know I I. I Initially, my thought was to do like, well, we'll do the biggest thing we can possibly do and we'll do 300 units and all of this stuff. Um, but, uh, you know, we, we, we need to find out where we can uniquely add value. And for us doing something small and getting in and uh, figuring out what, what's the level of amenities we want to provide here and what's, what's the type of thing that we want to do. That's stuff that we need to learn over time. So we'll take it slow. And, and the, the cool thing is by, by answering that question, which we touched on at the very beginning, which is how do you provide value? Um, I'm, I'm, we're, we're kind of embedded in the space now. We know, we know what the possibilities are. We know what the deals look like. We know what syndications look like. And so we're just in the, in the world and opportunities are much more apparent than they were when we were just trying to get in and trying to be part of things. So I'm sure that we will over time. We're just taking it slow and, and, and we're, we're I'm real, I'm real excited about little opportunities that are showing up for us here and there. Yeah, I think that's absolutely the right approach. I mean, you, you go to kind of your comfort level, but number one, you guys are plugged in now with a great 
ecosystem of operators. All of this whole business is relationship driven. So mm -hmm. you can't go wrong um, providing a great service to a lot of different operators around the country and, and growing from there. So I'm, I'm sure, you know, that holds a lot of opportunities for you guys uh, outside yeah. just the software. Platform. And we think, we think just like, if we can provide more value, right, go deeper with those clients. And that's why some of the things like we could, you know, they're, the, the type of, of deal that we have, we could build it really big and sell it, right? We could build this company and, and just focus on numbers and quantity and scale. And I think the direction we're going is to focus on quality over quantity um, and to focus on, you know, we're, we're limiting our growth to some degree and, and doing interviews to make sure that uh, the person is going to be a good fit for our tool, that they'll like it and that it really be help them in their business because, you know, it creates, it creates more painful support requests for us if they don't like us or like our tool and they just have to have it or if they're just not a great fit. So, um, but, but that said, we're, we're doing some limiting, but then we're also finding ways to, to offer more value and, and to figure out what are the other pain points that, that our, our clients are having and where can we really uh, help them with their business. I think some of that's going to come, you know, come in the marketing side for us. We've got, um, an ex background in digital marketing and creating marketing funnels and all of that stuff. So it will, whether it's just education or actual services down the line, we'll continue doing that to, you know, we like being in this space. We like building relationships with you guys and, and like the people we work with. So it's, it's, that will definitely continue to grow. Yeah, that's great. If you're setting it up like that, you're in, being intentional about your clients. You like who you work with. That's uh, that's a scalable business, right? That's, that's absolutely a scalable business. So mm -hmm. love it. Well, Josiah, this has been very helpful. Appreciate the overview. If somebody wants to learn more about what you guys are up to, uh, where can they go? Yeah, InvestorDealRoom.com is the main website. Um, you can go through there. You can uh, kind of view some videos. We're actually getting, by the time we uh, release this, we'll have the new website up and going. So uh, you can kind of contact us through there. Uh, you can also add me on LinkedIn, Josiah Mann at LinkedIn. Okay, perfect. Yeah, well, I de definitely recommend those listening that are looking for software automation in their business. Uh, go, go give it a look and, and connect with Josiah. So Josiah, man, thank you very much for uh, spending some time with us today. We appreciate it. Thanks for the invite. I'm glad to speak with you again, Devin. All right. Take care. Later. Thank you for listening to the DJE podcast. For more information, please go to djetexas.com.